I, I hate my voice. <laughs> if you want a quick answer, yes, the Confederate flag is racist. But don't click away, let me explain why. Also, I'm sorry for the bad quality, I am filming on a toaster. For some context, I live in Arkansas and pretty close to Harrison, which has been named the most racist town in the United States. I see the Confederate flag every single day. I know people personally that own this flag and believe it's not a symbol of hate, but instead heritage. I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to attack one side or the other. I'm just here to present both sides to you. And I hope that instead of getting mad at me or screaming at people in the comments, I can inform you and we can better understand each other. A few months ago, I came across a very interesting video. This video essentially is about a classroom discussion in which the students share their opinions of the Confederate flag. Is this flag inherently racist? I was expecting to see most of these teens agree that, of course this flag is racist, but I was shocked to see quite the opposite. The teacher starts the discussion by laying out the basic argument. Does the Confederate flag represent hatred or heritage? Drake first argues that people are misinformed about the flag's true meaning, saying it was never a racial thing. Christopher suggests that there are absolutely no misconceptions about the Confederate flag, and he continues to say that it has always been about race, and that the flag we recognize today isn't even the original flag used in battle. This intrigued me, as I didn't know this before watching the video, so I decided to do my research the way that most Zoomers do. TikTok. Duh. <laughs> Let's talk about it. This has never been the Confederate flag. This has never been an official flag in the Civil War. This one is the first of one, two, and three. The flag you're familiar with is specifically the battle flag for the Army of Northern Virginia, and though it was pushed to be the official Confederate flag, and specifically the official Confederate battle flag, that never happened. Forrest's Cavalry Corps? Remember that name. This is the flag that Southerners often claim is part of American history and that it shouldn't be erased. The history of how you no longer wanted to be American? The point of the war? Here are some of the flags they used. The Klan, that one, was started by six Confederate veterans, including Nathan Bedford Forrest. Remember that Forrest guy? Forrest was the first ever official Grand Wizard of the KKK. After the war, this flag was then reappropriated by the Klan to be able to communicate with each other who was and was not a white supremacist. Ex-Confederates formed the Klan. But of course, I'm not just going to trust any random TikToker that I see. I fact-checked it, and it seems to ring true. So, not only is this flag not the original flag meant to resemble this part of Southern history, but the KKK, yes that one, actually rebranded to using the modern flag as a signifier that they were white supremacists. The kids in this video seem to laugh at Christopher, which is a shame. He clearly overprepared for this. So when we see this flag being flown as a way of celebrating our heritage, what exact part of our heritage are we seeing here? Well, it seems like that heritage is the KKK and the hate crimes committed against minorities for the past century or so. Not actually the war. <laughs> what about the Confederacy is worth celebrating anyways? It only lasted five years and y'all didn't even win in the end. Drake says it's a message of don't push me over the edge because we'll retaliate, but... I mean, if that's what you want to interpret the Civil War as, then so be it, I guess. Another point that Drake brings up during the discussion is the Tariff of 1828. He says, The North was making unconstitutional and unfair taxes on the South, and that is what started the Civil War, not slavery. So I looked into this for myself. This tariff was dubbed the Tariff of Abominations by the Southerners because of its effect on the Southern economy. It was created by John Quincy Adams and was enacted during the presidency of Andrew Jackson. Basically, Britain was selling their goods for much cheaper and getting all the profit, and this bill was made to fix that. The problem is, this tariff excluded the South because the South didn't make product. The South sold raw materials and got most of their profits from Britain because the price was so low for these raw materials, Britain was able to buy in bulk, make products, and sell for cheap. Since the tariff made it harder for Britain to sell in America, there was no longer interest in buying from America. This definitely dented the southern economy, but I mean, they owned slaves and didn't have to pay them all, so like, honestly, who cares? <laughs> but it would hurt the southern economy because they would then tax the cotton that goes out to Britain. It was unconstitutional and unfair. Can I ask a question real quick? Yes. You said the two major crops were what? Cotton and tobacco. And how did they harvest them at a high level without 
price has been tested? Like, what was their main way of harvesting? Well, probably slavery. slavery. The cotton, the cotton, the cotton, 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 how much did they pay the slaves? Well, oh, I'm just asking the question. I mean, if their main two crops I mean, were cotton and tobacco, and they used free labor, so they made a lot of profit off of it, this is just economics, then how do you take out the fact that slavery was attached? All right, well, I have a question for Mr. Justice, then. Well, the South cared. But what's interesting is, they actually resolved this decades before the Civil War. The Compromise Tariff of 1833 was a way that both parties agreed to lower their taxes over time to eventually end up where they were before, 20%. Both sides were able to get there by 1842. The Civil War started in 1861. Of course, the Union and the Confederacy had some petty drama along the way, but don't get it twisted. The Civil War was very much about slavery and the supremacy of the white man not about taxes. The teacher interrupts the conversation to ask the general question of whether or not feelings of being threatened or insulted by the flag are valid. I, for one, definitely take feelings of being threatened seriously, especially if those feelings are coming from minorities. Are you kidding me? All you liberals talk about is your feelings. I'm actually a leftist, it's not the same thing. Can you please not compare? Anyways, allow me to show you my side of things. It doesn't matter if somebody gets offended because I know what the flag means to me. This is like saying that the American flag represents taking the Native American people's land from them. Nowadays, everything can be taken as offensive. So I would honestly take your criticism with a grain of salt. The flag is all about our southern heritage. The red represents the blood of Christ, the white border represents the protection of God, the blue X is the Christian cross of St. Andrew, which was the first disciple of Christ, and the 13 stars are the 13 states of succession. It's important to learn and respect our history. The flag doesn't represent racism. The real meaning of the flag is, through the blood of Christ, with the protection of God, we the 13 states are united in our Christian fight for liberty. This isn't fair. Democrats just want something else to take away from us. The Confederate flag is all about Southern unity and nothing more. How come black people are allowed to be proud of their heritage and white people aren't? Why should I have to apologize for being white? It isn't my fault what my ancestors did. Y'all just want to erase our history. Us white people should be worried. They're trying to bring on a race war. 1350, black on white crime, the communists. As a way to settle this, I'd like to quote someone pretty significant to this topic. The flag we see today was created, or just proved, we aren't completely sure, by William Porcher Miles, a Confederate politician who was in charge of the Confederacy's flag committee. The flag was used in battles, but never really an official symbol of the Confederacy until after the war. When deciding on what would be the second version of the official Confederate flag, a popular Confederate newspaper editor, William Tappan Thompson, supported Miles' flag, but suggested a white border to make it clear that this is the white man's flag. Thompson was further quoted saying, As a people, we are fighting to maintain the heaven-ordained supremacy of the white man over the inferior or colored race. A white flag would thus be emblematic of our cause. Many people agreed with Thompson and the design was incorporated into the second official flag. Look, I'm not here to tell you whether or not you can fly the flag or be open and educated about your southern history. Quite the opposite, actually. I'm here to encourage you to learn about the flag's history before you decide to fly it publicly. Stay educated and open to different opinions. The meaning of symbols can be morphed over time. You can make this flag mean whatever you want. I mean, look at the swastika symbol. It has always been a spiritual symbol with many different meanings in every culture. You know, until the Nazis reappropriated it. It's important to be aware of the flag's full history, and I know I haven't covered everything in this video, but I heavily encourage doing your own research. Don't ignore the criticism. People are upset for good reasons. As a way to end this video, I would just like to say that in today's world, it is not enough to just not be racist. We have to be actively anti-racist. In the words of MLK, I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace which is the absence of tension to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mythical concept of time, 
and who constantly advises a Negro to wait for a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection.